thank you, God, for this time of allowing us to go into your word. Father, we pray right now that you open our hearts, open our minds, help us to hear what your word is saying. Father, I magnify you this day. Father, we pray right now that you speak to me and through me. Let your people not hear me, but you who live within me. I thank you right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You may sit. So we have a, uh, a sermon today which is entitled, Fathers, You Are Needed. Fathers, You Are Needed. And we took a couple of Sundays off from the, the series which we are talking about, The Blessed Life. We will return to that soon. But after spending some time with the Lord this week and asking him, what should I talk about? What should I be preaching on this morning? He led me to encourage fathers. Now, I'm not the kind of preacher that preaches on a topic just because a calendar date rolls around. So sometimes it may be Mother's Day, it could be Father's Day, it could be Christmas. And I don't preach the topic that you think will apply to that time because whenever you preach the Bible, it's relevant. But for today, the Lord led me to encourage fathers. So I just want to uh, reiterate to the dads in the room that you are needed. For many fathers, they don't even know how much they're needed for their children. And when I begin to research this, this sermon and I begin to think about, all right, Lord, what do you want me to say to your people? I begin to pull up stats on fatherless homes. Now understand, understand, mom, this is not to negate what you have done. This is not to make you feel bad because we cherish you. We bless you. We, we encourage you. You are very valuable and you are also extremely important. But also, fathers need to know they're important. Future fathers need to know that they are important as well. So when I begin to look at these stats, I tell you, I mean, they hit me like a ton of bricks. When fathers are not in the home, just listen to what happens. They're not in the home raising their kids. Young men are twice as likely to go to jail. 63% of youth suicides are from fatherless homes. 85% of children with behavior disorders come from fatherless homes. 71% of all high school dropouts, fatherless homes. 70% of juveniles in jail, fatherless homes. Kids are more likely to get into drugs. Kids are more likely to be confused about sexuality and gender identification when father ain't at home. They have sex earlier when dads aren't at home. And children are four times more likely to live in poverty when dads are not home. Can I tell you, Dad, you're needed. When I, when I look at these statistics and, and, I, and I look at the children that are now and that are being raised, it just helps me to understand how vital you are. The fathers are needed. Your children need you. The mother of your children needs you. And here's the thing, society needs you. Because when you leave home for whatever reason that is, not only does it affect the home, the, the, the child and the mom, it affects society because kids go to jail. Kids get on drugs. Kids commit suicide. Kids become bad and begin to hurt other people. It affects society. Being a father is a huge, huge responsibility. And, and, and the outcome of what you do as a father will outlast you way after you die. This hit me like a ton of bricks because I am from a family where my parents were divorced. My, my biological dad was not at home. Thank God for my stepdad. 
My biological dad wasn't at home, and, and I had problems. I got daddy issues. I had problems with my dad. And my, my dad, man, I mean, he, he, he was a decent guy. He had his issues, but I was angry because he wasn't there. I, I was frustrated because he wasn't there. I was frustrated because he got married and started a new family. And then my children, my, my two sons, I have two sons. They are a product of divorce as well. Sister Lisa is my, my, my second wife. I'm being real transparent this morning. She's my second wife. So, so, so I found myself doing some of the same mistakes that my dad was doing to me, to my kids. And, and, and what I had to do, I am being very honest, I had to go and ask my sons to forgive me. They're both adults. They just graduated uh, high school. Good kids. One of them here today. Very good young men. But I had to ask them to forgive me because I did not measure up to the standard of the Bible when it comes to being a father. Dad, this message is to not mess you up. It's not to beat you up. I care about you because I be one of you. And, and, and I've messed up multiple times over and over again. But this message is to encourage you and to show you the, the reality and the gravity of our situation. To show you how important our roles are as fathers. And for you, if you're not engaged in the life of your child, to get engaged in his or her life. This includes also fathers who are at home. Because there are a lot of fathers at home who are not engaged in their kid's life. Just because y'all sleep in the same house does not mean that you are engaged in their lives. That would include stepdads. You need to, to be engaged in those children's lives. When you married her, you, be, you became to have children if she had kids. So you need to be engaged in those children's lives. Too many fathers are passive. They're bystanders. They, they let their wives raise the kids. They, they, they let their wives correct the kids and, and discipline the kids and, and, and raise the kids and, and mentor the kids while dad just comes home after working a hard day. Praise the Lord, he's working. But after a hard day, he comes and sits in his chair and let life pass him by because he's tired. But guess who else is tired? Mama tired too. Mama's a little frustrated too. And so, so fathers, we have to make sure that we work hard to be in our children's lives. And if you're not at the home, you have to work hard to make sure that you're engaged in their life. Because you don't live under the same roof. You have to work even harder to make sure that you're in their lives. Raising them and caring for them and providing for them and mentoring them and, and loving them and disciplining them. This is even if you like the mama or not. Because when you don't get a divorce or, or y'all don't split up after having these kids, usually y'all don't like each other anymore. But men, she is not the priority when it comes to seeing your kids. Being there for your kids. Providing for your kids. Have a neutral space and have her drop them off. So she can go her way and you can go your way with the kids. Spending time with them. And if you don't like her, it makes it even harder. But you got to put your emotions aside. Men always say, I ain't, I ain't, no, I'm not emotional. Yeah, let her start saying something you don't like. See how emotional you become. I'm not, I'm not emotional. Yeah, so why are you staying away from your kids? Because you don't want to feel that rejection. That's emotion. Dad's kids need you. Your children need you. Their mother needs you to be a father to their, to your children. 
Even if they don't say it, even if they don't believe it, it does not negate the fact she needs you to be their daddy. Because you cannot do what mama can do. And mama surely can't do what you do. Mom and dad are vital to that child being raised and growing up to be a healthy, responsible citizen of these here United States. Dad, you have to show that boy what it means to be a godly man. Dad, you have to show that girl what it looks like or what she should be looking for in a godly man. By the way you live, by the way you speak, by your demeanor. You should be an example for your children. And to better help us to understand how, how it's important for us to be fathers, we turn to our, to our text in the book of, of Malachi. Malachi is, is the last word that, that God gives to the nation of Israel before he is silent for over 400 years. While, while we don't know anything about Malachi, we don't know if he's married, we don't, we don't know if he had kids, we don't, we don't know where he grew up, we don't know any of that stuff. But many scholars believe that Malachi prophesied to the nation of Israel when Israel had returned back to Palestine after being in captivity in Babylon. Even though they're back in the nation, even though the nation is back in their homeland, they're still under Persian control. The temple has been rebuilt. Worship has been reestablished. The priesthood is, is back. Things are running better than they have been before. And, and many commentaries tell us that Malachi prophesied after Israel has been in their homeland now for close to a century, a hundred years. And while there is no blatant idolatry. They have a lot of full, well, how can I say this, dead religion. Even though they're not doing anything to say that you guys are not serving God, inwardly they're dead. Inwardly they don't believe God. Inwardly they have no faith in God. It's kind of what 2 Timothy 3, 5 puts it, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Externally, they play the part. But inwardly, they don't have any real faith. Of which, as, as the Bible says, we should stay away from. Can I tell you, Christian, don't just play the part. Don't, don't, don't just get your big old Bible and walk around. Don't just play the part. Crack that sucker open and read it. Right? Don't, don't, don't just play the part. Just don't get in your, your, your Sunday best and come to church and fall asleep and then go out and live any kind of way you want. We shouldn't just play the part. We should be the part. We shouldn't just, we shouldn't just look like Christians. We should be Christians. We should speak like Christ. We should think like Christ. We should behave like Christ. Dads, just don't play the part. Don't just show up at the achievement times. Don't, 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 don't just show up at, at, at the fun stuff, at the baseball games and, and the basketball games or at graduation. Don't just show up when things are good. Show up when things are ugly, when things are bad, when you have to be the bad guy and the disciplinarian. Don't just play the part. Be the part. Dad, you have to be active in your children's life in good times, bad times, and downright ugly times. And while Israel, they, 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 they looked the part. They, they looked like they were following God. Externally, they had it all together. But inwardly, they were questioning God's love. Have you ever questioned God's love? Question, do God, do you, do you really love me? Do, do, are, you, do you, are you really going to do what you say you're going to do? They questioned his love because their, their crops were failing. They had long experiences of drought. 
So therefore, when the crops fail, people can't eat, therefore people get sick. They say, God, how can you say you love us when all this is happening? And they blame God and they question his love. But in actuality, they shouldn't have been questioning God's love. They should have been questioning their love for God. Because even though they're back in their homeland, they are acting worse than they did before they went into Babylonian captivity. Listen, don't expect God to bless you when you live in disobedience. Now, don't expect God to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive if you live in disobedience. That, and that also includes if you pay your tithes. Because just because you're giving money, that doesn't mean that God doesn't want you to live holy. He wants you to live righteous. And in chapter 1, God asked him, he says, listen, why are you not honoring me as your father? Father meaning your, your, your source. Why not you looking at me like you should be looking at me as your, as your source and as your sustainer? They were even coming, the Israelites, they were even coming giving God what's called polluted offerings. They were giving offerings for their sin of, of animals that were blind, that were lame, that were sick. Some of them even took stolen animals and put it on the altar and asked God to forgive them for their sins. You just stole somebody's animal. And now you want to use that as an offering for your sins. Listen to what the Lord told them in Malachi 1 and 10. He says, I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, nor will I accept your offerings from your hands. God says, listen, I don't even want your worship. I don't even want what you're giving me because you're not worshiping me the way I told you to worship. Do you know who led worship in Israel? The men. Do you know who led worship in the families of Israel? The fathers. Men, if you don't get worship right, your family won't get worship right. Husband, dad, if you don't get worship correct, your family will not get worship correct. If you don't see the importance of prayer, guess who's not going to see the importance of prayer? Your family. If you don't see the importance of reading your Bible and coming to church and serving God in the church and out of the church, if you don't see the importance of helping people, no matter if they love Jesus or not, guess who else ain't going to worry about those things? Your family. Generally speaking, so goes the husband, so goes the house. There's always exceptions to the rule. But, but generally speaking, so goes the dad, so goes the children. See, if mom come to church, kids will come for a while. But what happens is when that, when that boy becomes a teenager, he begins to rebel and say, why do I got to go to church? Daddy don't go to church. And since there's no one there to have that backbone to say, no, we all serve God in here, that boy ends up staying home watching football with daddy, washing the car with daddy. But when, when dad comes to church, generally speaking, so does the whole family. Mama come, generally speaking, mama come, and kids come. And when those kids start acting crazy, saying they don't want to go to church, who steps in? Not mama. Daddy steps in and says, no, no, this is what we do on Sunday. Church only an hour and a half. You can do whatever you want afterwards. But on Sunday morning, we come and we serve God. Amen. Dad, you are needed to be the spiritual leader of your house. Can, can I tell you, Dad, Pastor Steve is not the spiritual leader of your house. I am not the spiritual leader of your house. Don't expect Pastor Steve to come in and save the day for the problems you create in your house. You are the spiritual leader of your house. You take time to read the Bible with your family. 
You take time to pray with your family. You take time to make sure those kids are up and clean and washed so they can come to church. You take that responsibility. Not only was Israel treating God bad, they were treating each other bad. The Bible says that they were dealing treacherously with one another. Malachi 2 and 10. They weren't fulfilling their obligations. They weren't keeping their word. And this was showing up blatantly in marriages. You had, you had, you had husbands, right? You had husbands leaving their families, getting a divorce just so they can go marry somebody else. They, they, they were leaving their families just to go and start a new family with somebody else. And these wives in Malachi, these wives weren't doing anything to initiate the divorce. They weren't going out sleeping with nobody. There was no adultery. These husbands just said, you know what? I want a new wife. I don't like how this life is living, so I'm going to go and start me a whole brand new life. These men, they didn't want to be married anymore to their Jewish wives. So they left their Jewish wives, divorced them, and went and got new wives. And, 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 and the Lord says, God said to them, you're marrying the daughters of a foreign god. So basically what these men were doing, they were saying, you know what? I'm just tired of being married to you, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get a divorce, and I'm going to go and find me a new wife. Because this, this new wife, she knows me. <laughs> this, 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 this new wife, she, she understands me. Who, who ever said that the Bible isn't relevant? The same thing they were doing years ago is the same thing happening today. Men leaving their families because they can't stand the pressure. And they say, you know what? I won't go find me. Me is a new woman. You got men leaving their wives just so they can go find them a new one. Saying they fell out of love with their wife. And they've fallen in love with somebody else. Listen, your current wife will understand you if you talk. Your current wife will have an opportunity to get to know who you are if you speak. Instead of just coming home and putting your feet on the couch and being silent for 10 hours. And just like you fell out of love with her, you can fall back in love with her. As soon as you understand that love is not an emotion, well, you always get these tingling feelings. Love is not an emotion. Love is a commitment and action. And you got, listen, you got to work to keep that flame lit. You better put on something to keep that thing going. Put on some music, take her out, do whatever you got to do. Take her to do something that both y'all enjoy to get that thing going. You need that motor running, baby. You got to get it going. I'm telling you. I'm telling you I'm feeling this right now. Man, you got to do something. Did y'all hear my voice go up? I'm like a couple of octaves higher. Right? Listen, you got to be an example. You, you, you got to be an example to your son of how you're able to endure the test of time with your wife. You have to be an example to your son of what it means and what it looks like to raise kids even when kids don't like you because you they're teenagers. And when they're teenagers, they don't like nobody but their friends. That's just what happens. They turn 12 and they don't like anybody. Nobody, except their friends. And, and, and you got to be there, even if you don't have a son, but you got a daughter. You need to be there for her husband, for your son-in-law, so he can see what a real godly man looks like. 
So he can see what it means to have a, a father in the home who sticks there and loves his kids and loves his wife, sacrifice for God, sacrifice for the Lord, and you do not run away. You got to be an example. Because that boy, he's going to come talk to you. Soon as life get hard. He's he going to come talk to you and say, God, he's going to say, Dad, how'd you do it? I know mom was crazy. How'd you stick and stay? I got one of them right now. I turned over and her head turned around. What did you do, Dad? And you can, and you can show him by your example and by your word. This is what I did. Man, I went and prayed a whole lot of times. Cried a whole lot of times. Sacrificed a whole lot of times. I put my feelings aside a whole lot of time because the marriage and these kids was bigger than how I was feeling. Father, your son and your son-in-law, if you have a daughter, need you not to give up on your family. They need you to stick and stay. They need you to love and to sacrifice. And in chapter 4, God tells Israel, he says, listen now, the day of the Lord is coming. Malachi 4.1. What is the day of the Lord? The day of the Lord is the day of God's judgment. He says, listen, the day is coming when all those proud folks, those proud folks meaning those who do wickedly, who don't care about God. He says, one day, the day is coming when those wicked folks, they're going to burn in fire. Those who don't believe in Jesus and as a result live a life that is contrary to the Bible, they ain't getting away with nothing. And he tells them that so they can understand that the, that the people who you see who, who, who live in this carefree life have no regards for the Bible, no regards for Jesus, no regard for anything spiritual, they're not getting away with anything. Because one day, chicken's going to come home to roost stuff gonna happen he says listen here but but those people who fear my name the, the, those people who 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 believe in Jesus and as a result of believe in Jesus their lives begin to follow to follow up with the word of God he says those people they will not feel the fire from the sun what they will feel is the healing wings coming from the son of righteousness so on the day of judgment, instead of them being burned alive, the Spirit of God, Jesus Christ, will cover them with his wings from the punishment of God. Listen, God will bless those who fear his name. God will bless them. These people will be, will, will be joyful and excited. Dad, can I tell you to be careful of your role models? That, 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 you, that you don't look up to people who are like those proud folks. That you don't look up to people who who, who having babies all over the place and not taking care of none of them. So when they seed like they're like they a force or something, just, just giving it to any and everybody. Don't, don't, don't let those men to be your example. Don't look up to people who have kids and don't pay child support. Don't, 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 don't view people as, as, your, as your idols, those who don't value marriage and don't value raising kids. Because listen, their future will not be bright. Even if those individuals are Christian and they believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, yes, they will go to heaven, but on earth, guess what? Their kids probably will not like them. And many of their kids will probably hate them. And they don't value marriage. Many of them will grow old and die alone. Don't let them men be your role model. Dad, have a role model of a man who loves God. Who loves his wife who loves his kids, who sacrifices for God.
sacrifices for his wife, sacrifices for his kids. Let that man be your role model. He may not be driving the fanciest car or living in the best house, but that man's life will be blessed at the end of his life. He will have kids around him. People looking to him for wisdom and guidance. Not only will he be blessed on earth, but he will be blessed in eternity. God going to bless that man. God is going to bless that dad. So in verses 4 through 6, I want to give us three points to to help us dads to, to become better dads. Real quick here. In verse 4, God tells Israel to remember the law of Moses with its statutes and its judgment. So so point number one, Dad, remember the Bible. Point number one, remember the Bible. Read it. Study it. Memorize it. And don't do it by yourself all the time. Pull your family around you. Pull your kids around you and read the Bible with your family. In verse number five, he tells Israel, he says, I'm going to send Elijah the prophet before the day of judgment. Who was Elijah? Elijah was was one of the prophets who was known for preaching repentance. He's also known as a prophet who didn't die in the Old Testament, but was taken up to heaven in the chariot of fire. And and this prophecy is... First, it it came to pass in in John the Baptist when he was out preaching before Jesus came. And then secondly, in the future, many believe that in Revelation chapter 11, those two witnesses that will come and will bring havoc on the world, one of them will be Elijah and the other one will be Moses. And then after those two witnesses die, God will bring more havoc and pour out his judgment on earth. So here's the encouragement, man. Number two, heed the warnings of God. You will not be perfect. You will not do everything right. But when you get off track and the Lord is calling you back, just follow him. This is not perfection. The Christian life is not easy. But when God reigns you back in, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and obey him. And be quick to repent. Don't be so proud. Be quick to repent, not just to God, but also to the people who you hurt. This would include your children, dad. Because in in verse number six, the result of Elijah coming to preach It says, it will be turning the hearts of the father to the children and the children's heart back to the father. That that, at the result of you repenting and coming back to God, when you go off track, what will happen is you and your son relationship will get better. You you and your daughter's relationship will get better. Because, Because you have heard the message of repentance and you said God forgive me and anything you did wrong to your kids you go to your kids and you say you know what forgive me I'm not perfect but forgive me and you have come back to them because you have heard the word and you have obeyed so point number three pray that God will give you a heart for your kids pray that God will melt your heart for your kids and it doesn't just stay inwardly but it shows out in how you love them and can I tell you this even includes adult children who make their own money get their own job live in their own house dad guess what they still need you They don't need you in the capacity that you had when they was in your house, but they still need you. They need your guidance. They need your wisdom. They need your understanding. They need your transparency. They need you to keep it real with them about life. 
So pray that you will build and mend those relationships. And if they're broken, pray that God will fix them. That you will go to them first, and as a result of you going to them, God will melt those kids' heart for you. Because even though they mad at you, they still love you. Because if they didn't love you, they wouldn't be mad at you. They wouldn't care. The very fact that they're angry shows that there is emotional attachment still there. See, when people don't, don't, when people don't love you, listen here, they don't care what you do. They, man, let that joker go about his life. But when they are struggling, that means that they have some love there still for you. So I want to encourage you to pray that God will melt your heart for your kids. And if you don't know Jesus, I want to pray that you know him today. That you will believe that he died for you. That he shed his blood for you. That he came back to life three days later just for you. So that you can have his father. And Jesus' Father can become your Father. And you can be a part of the family of God. I encourage you, don't leave this place thinking, you know what, I can do this later. Today is the day of salvation. Give your life to Christ today. If you want to give your life to the Lord, I just ask that you say a prayer with me. Let us bow. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Father, I believe you sent Jesus. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he came back to life three days later. Jesus, I make you my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.